Okay, I have shown how I did the initial setup of the DAP node system, then how to connect through WireGuard, and now let's have a look of how I am installing the staking packages. Now, this is not a video for complete beginners, I would say. Um, so if you want more basic uh, stuff to uh, be explained, then uh, yeah, subscribe. I'm going to put out a, a lot of uh, basic content uh, as well. Uh, or yeah, well, have a look around already. So it might, might already be, be there. Prata means that we are on testnet and that means that we can't lose any actual money because, because we're not dealing with actual ETH. Now we have execution client. We're going to choose another mind. And for the consensus client, Nimbus. That worked the fastest for me to get up uh, to begin with. So uh, the fee recipient address has to do with MEV boost. We're not going to set this up properly. I'm just putting in 40 zeros after the zero X here, just as a filler. Um, and oh, I definitely going to do that later because it has to do with MEV boost, but we're not setting this up right now. Let's deal with the basics first and then later on move on to MEV boost. Right, then the graffiti, that's what uh, is shown in beacon uh, chain later on uh, when you propose a block. So I leave it at validating from that node. And the checkpoint sync is very important because that syncs the blockchain very fast. And I had to make sure not to put a slash at the end because that then it, then it doesn't work. So um, that was a lesson learned. Um, and now we have to choose the web signer, which is the uh, which deals with our keys. Then um, more more on that later. While we just click on it. So here a little summary um, of what we've just uh, put in, and now we apply changes. Now I've sped this up a little bit. Uh, it's just the boring part. Uh, it takes a few minutes. Uh, so we look at the dashboard and then suddenly Gurley Nethermind uh, appears, but somewhere yellow and then jumps back to normal. And uh, we will see, oh, then suddenly Nimbus Prata uh, pops up with an error message. <gasps> What's going on here? But um, just relax, it's all gonna sort itself out. So you have to just a uh, bit of patience, a few minutes. So let's have a look at the, um, the log files of uh, Nimbus and Nethermind. At the top is Nethermind. And at the bottom is Nimbus. And yeah, some unhandled exceptions and uh, all sorts of stuff. That is a bit scary at the beginning, but it doesn't matter because they have to sort of come to grips uh, with each other first. Uh, they have to start talking to each other and they're sorting that out and Nimbus appears, disappears. And so again, I set, I sped this up a bit, but now successfully set new starter configuration. It might not even appear on yours because you clicked away or something. So uh, don't worry about it. Eventually the packages here should up, uh, should, should show up in green. Um, Nimbus is still sinking, but it's 99%. So there's only gonna, uh, it's a bit, a few more seconds. And uh, then go on, there it is. Nimbus, uh, yeah, sync now, 4 million blocks, whatever it is, uh, rather than starting from the beginning, it just, uh, just synced the last 64 blocks or so. Now, never mind, um, we have to have a look, uh, an eye on that, but let's have a look at the ports first. So um, if your router supports UPnP, then um, you probably don't have to do anything here at all. Uh, so don't worry about what I'm doing for the next few minutes. But if you have uh, no U UPnP in the router, or you don't want to turn it on for, for whatever reason, then um, yes, you have to open the ports manually. In my router, I definitely had opened the port 80, uh, 3084 for Nethermind Gurley, but I have not opened Nimbus Prata, which is uh, 9. Five zero six. So let's head over the to the to the router to my router. Yours might look completely different. I go to port forwarding, and then yeah, copy the so the nine five zero six. Uh, I am going to put that. Oh well, hold on. This is the IP, the local IP. Uh, that's definitely something you have to 
show and it's that that one there in the dap node it shows you um which local ip it is and that's the ip you have to put in the the router and then the port numbers there 9506 all the way through and it is on both protocols so tcp and udp so just tick uh, the both um both of them it might look completely different on yours but you should have sort of similar sounding and looking fields there so let's turn it on and add the rule to the router settings and then the router knows uh, where to route those packages okay heading back to the ports section and doing an api scan shows that all the ports are open right now let's a uh, quick look at the logs again and Nimbus says that it has current PS23 when it wants 160. Uh, well, I hope that gets more here. 16 hours to backfill in the whole blockchain. That would be super fast. Uh, well, mind you, it's on the test net. The test net is smaller. So on the uh, main net, I think it's about two days it was for me. Um, but anyway, so that's better than six or seven days, which I had before with other packages as well. Now, important to note is that uh, Nethermind doesn't update its uh, status there. It always stays at zero blocks, although it does stuff in the background. So that's a bit annoying, but uh, very important to know. Well, so let's leave it for a while. Let's have some lunch. Okay, back from lunch. And Nethermind has just started uh, its, its snap syncing phase in the upper right corner. You can see 1.9% and so on. Well, let's leave it for a few more minutes boom about 15 minutes later on the left hand side you can see nethermind uh, suddenly jumps to fully synced and that is amazing believe me i went from basically nothing to a system which is completely ready to start uh, staking and that within about one and a half hours but now it unfortunately would get a bit messy because uh, I have to obtain the girly ETH and then I have to go to the launch pad and then generate the keys and lock the 32 ETH up in the smart contract and all that stuff. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump over that now. I'm going to pretend I've done all that and I've got my key store files already. And so uh, what I'm sh going to show you now is just how I import those key store files and then the system starts um, staking, validating, uh, attesting, aggregating, proposing blocks. Uh, so just so that you uh, know the theory of it, and then we go through that uh, other process in later videos. So on the left-hand side, just go to Packages and then Web3 Sign Up Router. And in there, you hit the little UI button, and then you suddenly in a completely different environment, which is super confusing, but that's the way it is. Now here are we going to import our key store files. You can see on the right. So import key store files. We don't need slashing protection because I didn't have any slashing protection because uh, I haven't exported anything. It's just turned off and that's it. So I dropped the first key store file there. That's the first validator. And uh, I had two. So I drop, dropping in the second one. And uh, all we need to do there is uh, fill in the passwords. I had them in a um, file saved. So I just copy and paste it in here. And then submit the key store files. And there we go. State is imported. So now it's all in there. Um, let's have a quick look at the log files because there, down there, we can see a remote validator attached. So that means it has, uh, it, yeah, it's now actually validating. Now, I waited 10 minutes or so um, and uh, refreshed the on the beacon chain, the validator. And yeah, effectiveness is bad uh, because I, you know, I had it turned off for a while. And I just now you saw me turning it on there for the last like 14 days or whatever that was. It was turned off and now i've just turned it back on again and um and here you can see there the last epoch was uh, uh uh the first attestation for 14 days or so yeah that's about it so um all working now i can show you the the fiddly bits in between 